Hey, hentai cat, guess where I came from? A place that sells tight t-shirts to fat people? Fuck you! Hey there, cats and kittens! I went to the Missouri Game Con. My home state of Missouri is often overlooked these days, so we have to show initiative if we want to get anything neat. So this year in 2016, we celebrated the first Missouri Game Con. I've only been to one other first year convention, and that one turned out pretty badly, so I was pleasantly surprised with Missouri Game Con. Someday I might do a retrospective on the failed Dallas Sonic Con 2010, but I will save that for a later discussion. I think the greatest strength of the organizers is that they started off small. Admission was only $5 if you donated two cans of food to the homeless, or $10 if you didn't want to donate food for some sociopathic reason. The entire convention was crammed into a single convention hall at an Elks Lodge, and the event was sold out. They were turning away people who were trying to get door tickets. The convention had a simple two-event format, vendors and tournaments. To the best of my knowledge, this convention was organized by a trade group of local independent Missouri video game stores, and this heavily influenced the convention. Drawing on their strengths, I would say that 80% of the space was reserved for vendors, so the convention felt like a swap meet or flea market. This place had everything from common hit titles to obscure retro games. Not only that, but you could find a wide array of video game accessories, fan merch, and Japanese candies. There were even two booth babes, but I didn't get any pictures because I didn't want to be a creeper. This was not just bins of throwaway Genesis football games. I was blown away by the rare and obscure stuff I found for sale. The most obscure game I saw there was the end of life SNES game called Hagane about cyborg ninjas. It was selling for over 3,000 US dollars. In addition to that, there was a Super Nintendo store display in complete working order. Perhaps one of the rarest items was an official black NES. The black Nintendo Entertainment Systems were originally paired with matching television sets and meant for use in hotel rooms. I got to touch and play one. In addition to the games, there were a number of video game tournaments. There was a very large Super Smash Bros. tournament. I entered the tournament, but the crowd was so loud and cheering, I didn't hear my name called, and I lost my match by forfeit. Another tournament was the 1995 Blockbuster World Video Game Championships. It's hard to understate what a cultural force Blockbusters was in the 1980s and 1990s. There simply was no internet, so if you wanted to see or play something new, you had to rent it from Blockbusters. Going to Blockbusters was a weekend ritual for nearly every family, and I remember the excitement around Blockbusters operating these tournaments. Now whenever I go to a bar and someone asks to see proof of my age, I pull out my Blockbusters card and say, Hey, I'm so old, I could fuck your mom. If anyone had ever seen the movie The Wizard in the 1980s, it may have given you the fantasy of being a Nintendo World Champion. What some people don't know is that The Wizard was slightly real. There was a Nintendo World Championship, and there were winners. With much excitement, Missouri Game Con brought out reproduction cartridges of both the 1990 Nintendo World Championship and the 1991 Nintendo World Championship. And to an even greater surprise, the winner of the 1991 Nintendo World Championship happened to live within driving distance, so he showed up and basically made everyone his bitch. At this point, I was competing not because I thought I had a chance to win, but because I wanted the privilege of losing to someone who was truly a legend. Kind of like a little league baseball team being invited to play against the World Series champions, even though they know in their hearts that they will lose, and lose embarrassingly badly. I also want to give a little shout out to Graphite Labs, the makers of Hive Jump. Graphite Labs is an independent studio here in St. Louis, and they had a quality game on display for people to play at the convention. If you want to see some of the neat things coming out of the resourceful minds in St. Louis, I would check out the four player action game Hive Jump. The entire convention was short and sweet. It lasted only 7 hours from noon to 7 o'clock p.m. I stayed for only about 5 hours. I bought a lot of games, and since the dealers were all independent, I was able to negotiate, and I only had to pay full price for a single game. My favorite moment was when I saw a complete inbox version of Shadowrun for Sega Genesis, but when I ran to the ATM, someone else ran over and bought it. Then I heard a voice across the way saying, here are my ex-wife's Genesis games, somebody better buy them. I pointed to a loose Shadowrun Genesis cartridge and said, Hey, 20 for Shadowrun! To which I heard the reply, Fuck it! You can have it for 15! So my final Party Cat Party prognosis for Missouri Game Con is, 
if you want to see as many video games packed into one place, and you don't want to spend more than $5 on admission, and you think it might be hilarious to play a tournament and argue over game prices while packed into a crowd like a Tokyo subway evacuation, then Missouri Gaming Con can really make your party cats meow. Meow meow meow.